Nothing like a deep inhale of a hot dog in front of thousands of people. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme for today's episode is hot dogs. International edition. We did American combos. <gasps> Why is this hot dog besting me? I think today's one of the best days of my life. Now it's time to go a little global. We have five hot dog combos from five countries. Let's get started. Hi Beryl, my name is Valeska and I am from Florida, but I am a first generation Guatemalan immigrant from my mother's side. Today I wanted to talk to you about chucos guatemaltecas, which is Guatemalan hot dogs. These are different than traditional American dogs in the sense that they're piled high with just a rainbow of toppings you can pick from. Chucos translates to dirty. And trust me, you're gonna feel a little dirty after you eat them but in a good way. It's not a shuko without the guac. That's really what makes it special. There are all sorts of toppings that you can pick from. Jalapenos, queso fresco, cilantro, chimichurri sauce, ketchup, mayonnaise, and mustard. A lot of OG Guatemalans will do con todo, which means give me all of it. <laughs> and I must confess, this is how I like mine too. I think everybody should try it because although the combination might seem a little different, a little strange, it's a really amazing flavor profile that is just so good and incomparable. And also, who doesn't love a messy meal sometimes? I hope you enjoy and I hope some of your viewers try it out. Bye. This hot dog is literally something from my dreams I also love that we cut the hot dog down the middle, which just gave more space to pile everything up. <sighs> Every topping was necessary. I'm a firm believer in more is more, and this hot dog is more is more. It is so good. And like the inside of the dog, because you cooked it, has like a little bit of char. There are so many sauces in here, wow. Wow, wow. I like that there are crunchy elements and soft elements and spicy elements and sweet elements. Like, this hot dog has it all, folks. <laughs> In case you were noticing my super cute earrings, Valeska actually made them for me. She's a silversmith. I am more than impressed. Between the hot dog and the earrings, wow. In my last hot dog video, I went too hard, too fast. So I'm not gonna eat all of every single one. I'm gonna save some for my husband. Maybe he'll want to eat my half-eaten hot dog. We're married. That's what marriage is. <laughs> Hi world. Hi Beryl. This is Paul from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada with origins from Kathmandu, Nepal. The dish I would like to present today is called the YY Dog. It is a fusion of bold Nepalese flavors, spices, beloved YY Chow Chow or YY Noodles, complemented with comforting North American taste of hot dog. I start with toasting regular hot dog buns in a pan. Make slight cuts diagonally on the sausage. Place it in the pan with mustard oil. Add in some spices such as cumin, turmeric, and chili powder. The slight cuts made on the sausage not only helps it to cook faster, but it also makes it even more flavorful as the spices and oil seeps in. How we assemble is I place the bun in a plate, put in the sausage, add in the hand crunched YY noodles, a few dollops of cilantro chutney, and squeeze in that lemon juice. And each bite is tangy, crunchy, and unforgettable. Happy eating! Never met a bag of YY that I didn't like, and I've never thought to put it on a hot dog. This is pretty fabulous. Mmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm I've done a few videos where not only do I cook with YY, but I've talked about the history of YY. It's one of the best noodles ever. It is deep fried, so you can eat it raw. It makes an amazing salad, and as a topping, like, if you like crunchy toppings on your hot dog, Adding like a spiced instant noodle is really a great way to go. I have to come at it from the side. <laughs> ah, ah! The why why is everywhere. Why? Why? I'll be here all night, folks. Don't click away. Please don't click away. 
I think one of the most interesting elements of this was cooking the hot dog in the tempered spices. This is something I have never done. I've never thought about like treating the hot dog like a king. I just kind of slapped it in the bun and I add all the toppings and the toppings for me is where it's at. But the hot dog here has so much flavor. And this is a really, really cool trick that I definitely will use again. If you're asking yourself, should I try making this hot dog? I would counter you with, why, why not? Sit with that. <laughs> Hi there and everyone. My name is Muslima. I live in Los Angeles, but I'm originally from Uzbekistan. One of the most common ways to eat a hot dog in Uzbekistan is with Markov jam. Markovcha is a Korean-style marinated salad that's made with julienne carrots and spices. You'll never find it at your typical South Korean restaurants because this dish originated in Central Asian region of Soviet Union, so it's still quite unknown in South or North Korea. I'm not going to dive too deep into history, but basically in 1937, due to pre-war tensions, over 150,000 Koreans that were living in Far East Russia at the time were deported to Central Asia, including Uzbekistan. Because of the lack of ingredients, those Korean immigrants had to adapt their cuisine. For example, without Napa cabbage, they couldn't make traditional kimchi anymore. So instead they used carrots and local spices like coriander seeds. And that's how Markovce came about. Actually, the name Markovce consists of two parts, Markov, which is Russian for carrot, and Cha, which um, I believe stands for a side dish in Korean. Today, this modified Korean food is highly popular all over former Soviet republics. If you come to Uzbekistan, you'll see women at bazaars or just street corners selling mountains of delicious Korean salads. Markovcha adds crunchy texture and a tangy garlic kissing to an otherwise common hot dog. When I was in school, I ate it quite often during lunch breaks. In fact, growing up, I believe that all hot dogs came with Markovcha by default. Give it a try and let's see how you like it. <sighs> Nothing like a deep inhale of a hot dog in front of thousands of people. <laughs> This hot dog uses one of my favorite pickled vegetables, markovcha. I've actually made this on my channel. It turned out good, but not as good as the store-bought kind. I will concede to that one. If the American hot dog episode taught me anything, it is that I love pickled things on hot dogs. I loved the Chicago dog. And so this, a hot dog topped with lots of pickled carrots, is gonna be good. Mm-hmm. I'm in a happy place right now. It's like a really happy place. This pickle's not just super, super sour. It's got like a sweet and sour balance to it, but it's very crunchy still. And so you get like kind of the soft bun and dog. I mean, the hot dog's not soft, but you know what I mean. But then like crunch of this cold, sweet, vinegary, pickly slaw thing. Ugh. And then the mayo, it just, it all rounds out, man. Honestly, I feel like hot dogs are my love language and every hot dog that you all have sent me has been a love letter. And like all of these just, it is so fun getting a little peek into your lives through a hot dog, which don't judge me for, don't think that's weird. It's not weird, okay? <laughs> it's real. <laughs> I feel like people won't understand unless they feel about hot dogs the way I feel about hot dogs, but <laughs> it is, <laughs> it's nice. I think one of the reasons that I like doing these toppings episodes so much is that the toppings that you use are like really reflective of your culture in a very real way. Like the flavors that people eat, the vegetables, the fruits, the condiments that are around. It's more telling to me in some ways than like a dish with chicken in it. I feel like I get a bigger sense of a culture through a hot dog than I can sometimes get through like an entire entree. If you're like, oh, I wanna try Markovcha, but where can I get it? Obviously you can make it. I'll leave a link in the description, but also you can go to any Eastern European grocery store and they will usually have it with all of their pickled foods. So if there's one where you live, that's how you can do it. Hi, my name is Monica and I live in Metro Manila here in the Philippines. Today I'll be talking about the Pinoy hot dog barbecue on a stick that's served with manok sauce. 
Manang is a term of respect that's used for an older male, and it's manong sauce in reference to the vendors that would hawk their various street food that pair well with this specific sauce. This is a hot oven stick, no buns necessary. Um, you would need a charcoal grill to make this, but in case you don't have access to that, a stove top grill would do just fine. You will also need a basting liquid that's made of two parts banana ketchup and one part vegetable oil. As for the manong sauce, it's a slurry of soy sauce, water, vinegar, brown sugar, and some chilies and garlic. Eating this reminds me a lot of my childhood. After school, after playing with friends, it's just around the same time that vendors start setting up their grills and hawking their street food. It's one of those snacks that kids would gravitate to because hot dog was a familiar food versus um, the innards and the awful cuts that usually make Filipino barbecue street food. And I think people should try it because it's pretty simple to make really. And again, the sauce goes well with a bunch of other fried food. So if you're craving for a hot dog but don't want the heaviness of the bread, then this is it. It's sweet, savory, smoky, and all those yummy flavors that you decide to put into the sauce. So I hope that you like it and that more people will try it. The cooking for this got off the rails pretty quickly. I thought that I was being so smart using my flat pan. I was like, look, the sticks will be fine. First of all, they were burning and one of the sticks burned completely off. And then the whole thing just started burning, like the hot dogs are burning and like maybe this is graph, like these look like frostbitten fingers. And it's a little burnt, but. Visually, I could have done better. I'm not gonna lie, that might be one of the best hot dog bites I've ever had. And I've had a lot of hot dog bites. Whoa. I'm pretty sure I've made this sauce before when I made Quek Quek. It's very familiar. It's kind of like a sweet and spicy soy sauce flavor. Mm. One of the ingredients in this dish, banana ketchup, has a really, really interesting story. So I'm gonna tell it to you because I love a good food history. So, you need to start the story in 1898 when the Philippines was under US occupation. The one thing that the United States did bring that was kind of interesting was tomatoes. The problem was, in World War II, a tomato shortage occurred, and by then, Filipinos loved ketchup, so they needed a replacement. A food scientist named Maria Arosa came up with this. Banana ketchup. This banana sauce is not made with the typical bananas that you might think of. They're actually made with Saba bananas. They're a lot thicker and like starchier. She combined those bananas with a bunch of spices, vinegar, little red food dye, and ta-da! Banana sauce, AKA replacement ketchup was born. And it's become a huge part of the food space in the Philippines ever since. As much as this episode is all about hot dogs, this, I feel like the sauce is the star. Mm -hmm -hmm. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Just like be careful of the sticks. Hi Meryl, I'm Pari and I'm from Palmerston North New Zealand and the dish I'd like to share with you today is a classic kiwi sausage from a sausage chisel. And the way it's made is usually pretty simple and bog standard all across New Zealand. Um, so we use one dollar bread, um, the sausages themselves which are usually beef or pork, margarine, onions and tomato sauce. I like this kind of sausage because it's really convenient to get. Usually you can find one outside a Bunnings or a Mitre 10 um, like any time of the year. I think pretty much every New Zealander has eaten this kind of sausage before. Um, it's a really big part of our community culture and it's also a huge part of our school culture. We usually have a sausage chisel at least once a week at lunch um, as fundraisers for different groups and that just means we all kind of connect over it and the price around New Zealand is usually two dollars as well so it's just something you can always expect and yeah it's just something simple that's kind of like a constant. They're cheap to make and they're simple to make but they're also really rewarding and the flavour payoff is quite amazing. Every New Zealander has eaten a kiwi sausage before so if you were to try one and share that experience with us it would be pretty special. Thanks, Beryl. I kind of feel like this sausage sizzler 
is the New Zealand cousin of the American wiener wink. You know, like the piece of bread. It's really just the piece of bread actually. <laughs> I knew it. Okay, that's really good. Whenever you put caramelized onions on something, it's just like stringy, stringy, like there's stuff coming out of your mouth all the time. Nobody can eat caramelized onions as a topping on something without looking like a fool. You're always like, oh, oh, oh excuse me, I've got onions everywhere. Wait. Oh, God. I think I actually might be coming around to bread bun. No, well, the other one is also made out of bread, but sliced bread bun instead of hot dog bread bun. God, this freaking onions, man. Ooh, the bread though is doing what bread does, like white bread does, and I've got like compacted white bread behind my front teeth. Oh, that is hard to get out. I think the only way to get past it is to go through it, you know? Whoa, I thought it was smaller. I'm satisfied, like deep, deep in my soul. Between the American toppings episode, this global episode, my 10 ways to have a hot dog episode, my other hot dog episode, I'm on my way to becoming the most prolific hot dog influencer on the internet. Which means we might need to keep going. I'm sure that there are other people who've done more hot dog content than me. I do have my series, If I Was a Hot Dog, which I think we should keep doing. So let me know if you were a hot dog, what your toppings would be, and I can make it, cause that's a weird thing, but a fun thing. <laughs> and before I go, a reminder that I made a show for PBS Food that includes tons of you guys from this community. I take two people and they swap their dishes. I'm leaving a link to the playlist right here so you can check it out. And on this side is more hot dog content. Which will you choose? <laughs> I will see you all in my next video.